Hi, welcome to video number 44 in the developer blog series for Democracy 4. Uh, I'm Cliff, I'm the programmer and designer of the game and I'm going to talk about what has changed in the game in the last few weeks. Uh, we're still in early access but not for very much longer. I know I keep saying this uh, but it will actually come out of early access soon and um, probably January I think at some point in January I, I kind of have a date but I don't want to give out the date until um, I'm absolutely absolutely certain about it anyway so this is the 44th video this is uh, build 1.44 that I'm uh, running here and I'm going to talk about a few things um, one of the things that I did was to look at the difficulty of the game um, some people find the game far too easy and they kind of like bounce off it and go well it's easy I got re-elected um, so there you go um, if you've watched these videos before, you'll know that the aim of the game is to make a country that um, that you approve of, and um, and and to stay in power so that you can like keep doing that. So, just winning an election if you turn the country into a complete nightmare is is kind of not winning. But anyway, so some people bounced off it. So. <sighs> What we've done is kind of uh, change the ordering slightly. So there is a country here, the third country, it used to be like the 10th country, um, is Japan. And Japan is one of the hardest countries, mostly because its debt is really high. So its debt interest payments are really high. So its economy is quite difficult. Um, one of the easiest countries is the first one, the United States. I might make that a little bit harder. Um, the absolute easiest country is South Korea at the end there. Um, so we've reordered them slightly so I'm, I basically I moved Japan to put it there um, so if you find the game a bit too easy try Japan um, it's difficult also is that that's Spain isn't it I know my outlines um, yeah uh, basically if you find the game too easy either change the difficulty obviously or uh, try a different country so something that I did is we collect stats on uh, what country is played and whether or not people win the first election and on that basis we can tell how hard the default settings for each country are so now we have like a difficulty rating here out of five so you can see so if you find the US really easy go for one of the high ones if you find the US quite hard then maybe stick to that and Germany um, and, and South Korea until you've got the hang of it and you know the, the way the game works better um, it's very hard for the developer of a game to balance difficulty because we're really good at it <laughs> um, I know all the policies and what their effects are and stuff like that. Um, I'm not that good at it actually, quite surprisingly, because um, I play in a certain style um, naturally, unless I'm trying not to. Anyway, so these are things we changed. We changed the order and we've um, put difficulty rankings in there. And I, I'll keep checking that those difficulty ratings are the same whenever we do changes to the game. So. Um, I've still been working on like mod support stuff. Obviously, there's there's loads of mods for the game, and um, actually, I just realised I got Steam running. Yes, I do. That's fine. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to go into the mod editor here, go to update your mod, and pick my little mod that I play about with, and click on this. So I've still been working on 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 all this stuff, and. Um, it's getting better and better and there's more of it so we now have like sim value editing so sim values are like the blue bubble stuff like inflation um, and it's exactly the same as, as editing the rest of this stuff so um, you would put in influences that's like inputs to your thing and you would put in effects which is um, kind of like the output and there's a modding guide on all, all this stuff and it it's much easier to do it here rather than editing loads of text files um, but you still need to know a lot of stuff so I'm aware of that and we're, I'm gonna do like um, when all of the modding stuff is complete I'm gonna do a guide to how to do a really complicated mod um, probably a YouTube video that shows me doing it in this stuff to make it really obvious and I'll probably link to it down here or something like that uh, so we've also added support for modding events so there's a new tab here for events um, I'm going to get rid of that and just put in um, one of the existing ones um, this is one of the existing images from the game but you can add your own images um, so events are those things that happen when you click on next turn occasionally you'll have a thing that will come up that like there's a riot or a building has burned down or there's a protest or whatever um, and they have inputs and effects uh, just like anything else um, 
It's worth mentioning with events that you don't have to have any effects. So some of the events in the game are things that kind of shake things up. So if you have, for example, like um, you host the Olympics or you get awarded the Olympic Games for your country or whatever, um, that can have effects that makes everyone happy. And um, that's one of the ways we use events in the game. One of the other ways is more informative. So you can have an event, maybe your country wins a certain award or whatever. Um, for achieving a certain goal and it's more to draw the player's attention to a particular value in the game and how that's gone up or gone down whatever so you don't have to have effects and the influences can actually just be a random number if you like um, but anyway it's easy to add events now um, the other thing that we have put in is this um, I did actually have an image set up because I was I was fiddling with it um, this is actually a, a real picture of a British politician called Boris Johnson. Um, he wasn't, he's now our Prime Minister. He wasn't um, at the time, he was the Mayor of London. And he did this PR event where he would dangle, he would like go down this zip wire over the Thames. I don't even know why, I don't even know what it was for. Um, whilst waving Union Jack flags and he got stuck halfway and was just left there bouncing up and down above the Thames wearing a crash helmet waving Union Jacks. Um, so uh, that's a real thing. Um, I'm going to put Dangle like an idiot. Um, anyway, um, so it's really easy to create a new media spin event. Um, so these are these things that you do in the electioneering part of the game where you spend political capital to try and make yourself more um, appealing as a leader um, and, and we have a, you can be strong compassionate or trustworthy these are the three things you're judged on um, and there's a bunch of them in the game but they're quite easy to mod in so you just need an image you need some text here the impact is like um, kind of how much it boosts that perception uh, success chance is a chance you're actually working uh, and, and doing that otherwise the impact will be negative I will just put in capital cost 5 whatever save um, so they're really easy to edit uh, media spin events so you can do that now as well and that's quite cool um, country editing is coming which is why I did a little tab for it but I haven't done it yet um, but we will be adding it at some point so um, what I'm going to be doing is, is, is like I say, improve, improving all of this stuff so it's a lot easier to do and you can you can kind of uh, make mods more easily. I want the game to be massively mod friendly. I want there to be loads of mods because people have, you know, very varied opinions um, on the game. So it's worth letting people kind of put together their own flavours of the game. Um, something else that has changed is that crime and violent crime are now harder to fix. And again, because we collect player stats anonymously, um, we can look at what the level of crime is and violent crime is when you win an election, and they're too low. Um, I want it to be harder to fix that. And, and the way we've done this is a lot of the, imp a lot of the influences on crime um, now have more of a curve. Now these are all quite small impacts, so it's quite hard to tell um, but you see the way that that's curved it used to not be curved it used to be linear so the idea is with this and, and, and I may have under adjusted this I may need to do it again um, I'll look at the stats um, in a few weeks um, the, the idea behind this is that it's easy to fix um, a bit of crime and it's hard to fix all crime. So basically, if we put, uh, was that CCTV cameras, I think? Or oh, that was that was police. Basically, if you have no police, there'll be loads of crime because people think it's fine, I'll get away with it, right? Um, if you have any police, then the more cautious people are gonna be like, I'm gonna get caught. Um, but there is a point at which that sort of curves off where you have more hardened criminals who know there's going to be police, there's going to be loads of police, but they think they'll get away with it or, they th or, or they're desperate or for whatever reason. Um, so obviously this should be a curve, right? We've made it a curve now, but it wasn't a curve before. Maybe it should be a more exaggerated curve. Um, I just don't know. Have studies been done reliably across different countries and different regimes? Who knows? Um, this is deliberate, by the way. Some people think this is a bug. Um, the prison regime stuff it's not because it's complicated right um, 
If you have a really harsh prison regime, let's go to it. If you have a really harsh prison prison regime, there is an argument that in the short term that reduces crime because people think I'm not going to prison. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to risk it, so it reduces crime. But there is an argument um, that in the very long run you're actually boosting crime. And you can see that there. If you look at these two effects, one is short term immediate, one is over a period of four years. And the thinking behind that is is basically that, um, yeah, in the short run, you're dissuading, you know, some people from, from committing crime. But also your regime is so harsh that there's no rehabilitation. So when those people come out, they just could commit crime again. There's no rehabilitation. You're not fixing the problem. You're just putting those people away for like, you know, I'm pointing at the screen. You can't see <laughs> for like four years or whatever. So the idea is that those are conflicting effects. Um, you might agree with that analysis or not, but I point it out merely to point out that it's not a bug because occasionally I get people going, it's buggy, you've added this twice. It's like, no, they are different things seen over different time scales. Um, and that is deliberate. Anyway, um, a lot of the stuff that happens at the moment is is kind of kind of behind the scenes because it, it, it's to do with balance. Because there are so there are so many um, equations in the game that all have to have to kind of like like balance out. And a lot of the work at the moment is on that and on modding. I will actually stop uh, doing the modding stuff at some point and then pay more attention to, um, again, to game balance, but also in, in kind of like fine tuning um, elements for different countries. Um, I'm still waiting for the Japanese translation. And uh, when that's done, that's basically the last thing, bar a few little, uh, Kind of like um, uh, rare bugs on on certain PCs um, that I need to do before it comes out of early access. Um, that doesn't mean the game is then abandoned. <laughs> um, according to gamers, games are kind of uh, bug ridden and not finished right up to the point at which they're released, and then they're immediately abandoned. There is no sweet spot in which gamers are happy, um, which is incredibly annoying. Um, but anyway, when it's released, and uh, we're then going to do um, you know updates. To, to add more content and do more stuff post release obviously um, eventually we'll think about um, doing expansion packs or something like that we did four expansions for democracy 3 that was social engineering which is my favorite one um, extremism which doesn't seem so extreme now clones and drones which was futuristic stuff and electioneering um, all of that stuff is already in Democracy 4. So this, uh, th this is uh, the electioneering expansion, basically. Um, although it's a lot, it's just way better now. It's way better now. Um, so um, we are open to ideas of like, once the game has shipped, what would be um, a good thing to do uh, as like an expansion pack for the game um, in the future? Part of me thinks, well, there are two ideas I have and uh, they involve a hell of a lot of work, but I think they would be cool. Um, one of which would be to, to model like voting systems and the business of casting votes. So obviously we do that in the game, but we don't do it, uh, we don't model different voting systems. We don't model different voting ages. We don't model um, stuff like whether or not you can cap um, campaign finance. Um, in the UK, I think there is a cap, the US definitely doesn't have a cap. Um, in the UK, you cannot have um, telephone calls or TV adverts for political parties. Uh, it's just banned, it's flat out banned. We have what are called party political broadcasts, which are given to each party. Um, I think in proportion to how they did at the last election or something like that. Um, but you can't just run TV ads saying, why not vote for Klipsky's party? Um, it's actually illegal in the UK. Um, and obviously, you know, that's a policy decision that could maybe be changed. So I think modeling stuff like that, um, also stuff like voter intimidation, um, which is a thing in, in like less stable democracies. <laughs> it's not gonna make any comment. Um, but stuff like that, I think, um, 
would be interesting to model in in, in more detail and also for example whether or not in your campaigning in dem when we model things here we have fundraising which comes seemingly mostly from donors and um, not from many members it must get people more keen to join parties I think and that needs tweaking so we model fundraising but we don't model how it's spent so do you do attack ads do you do positive ads or attack ads do you go negative stuff like that it would be interesting to wrap all of that up into an expansion maybe i think i don't know um, another idea that i would like to do is kind of um inspired by the tv show the west wing every now and then in the west wing they would try and be a little bit like 24 um which i never really watched but anyway so they go into the situation room and there would be like oh mr president there's a terrorist doing this we think should we drone strike him or not and or what should we do should we tell the public stuff like that so that that we kind of model that here in a very kind of simplistic way but i wonder if there's some mileage in adding to the game like it's a dedicated expansion a load of of kind of the kind of cia nsa kind of behind the scenes you never hear about it um nuclear terrorism threats and stuff like that because there's some interesting um decisions uh, to be made we have a policy somewhere which is quite hard to implement uh, torture use by secret services and we have like secret courts and stuff like that um but these are general sweeping policies well i, I think it would be more interesting if there were actual events um tied into the game where a very specific set of circumstances happened and you had to decide would you take this action that you know infringes civil liberties um would you like knowingly um like allow your secret services to blow up some building knowing that there were civilians in it if you had a credible threat that there was some biological weapon in there whatever you know th there's loads of decisions um to take that will make you seem like a strong leader but will upset liberals that would also be incredibly scandalous if it turned out that uh, it was fake and you just blew up a load of your own citizens. The classic example is there is a plane that doesn't respond and it's heading towards the capital do we shoot it down. Uh, stuff like that I think there's so much mileage there in tying that in to a general uh, political sim like this where, where generally you're, you're spending your time thinking should unemployment benefit be higher and then suddenly you have there's a jumbo jet do we shoot it down I think it'd be cool um, but I don't know what do you think um, and I'm sure some people go it should be part of the base game everything should be part of the base game you should work on this forever Cliff without ever ever releasing anything else anyway those are my vague thoughts um, on that topic um, thank you for watching this please like and subscribe blah 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 I'll do another video in um, a few weeks time and that will probably be the final one we do hopefully um, before we actually come out of early access and hopefully the modding stuff will be a lot more polished then and I'll go through it in more detail anyway thanks for watching and see you next time